Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Bead Made, and today I am going to show you how to layer your paints when it comes to your base coat. This isn't about shading, this is about getting the base coat colors on your models, and which ones you should start with, and how to kind of pick apart a model to define you should start with this one, then move to that one, and then which paint should be the last one. And this will really help you from having to keep going back over the same areas that you painted over and over because paint keeps getting on top of different things. So first off, I just want to say hey to all my subscribers. And if you're not a subscriber yet, please feel free to hit the subscribe button. And I put out a bunch of videos about 3D printing and painting 3D prints. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into my, I guess, art lesson. <laughs> So when you're painting, you're not going to just paint right to this edge and then right to this edge because then you might actually have a line that you miss or there might be some weird overlaps or things like that. And I was trying to figure out what is the best way that I could actually show you how to properly layer your paints when doing your base coats. So I figured why not use construction paper? Uh, I kind of went back to, you know, old South Park of how they actually created all of the characters and everything like that out of construction paper, and it was just using proper layering, and I figured this will actually make a lot of sense, so just bear with me. I know this is kind of stupid, but I figured this is actually going to make a lot of sense to a lot of people if you see it maybe in another way, because sometimes you're looking at your model and all of the dimensions and things like that can throw you off and it's kind of hard to separate everything of like how I should paint this and how I should tackle it. Because I do this every single time I start a project. I honestly just study it and figure out where I'm going to start and what I'm going to layer everything to. So this is literally just setting up your base coats. So when you're doing your base coats, you want to try to get a good coverage and get all the right colors. And I'm not talking about washes or dry brush or any other techniques. I'm just talking about getting the main solid colors on your model first. So we have this house and we have this amazing house that I made. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I felt like I was in kindergarten when I was creating this, but I feel like it's going to really help. So here we go. We have a house, just like this house, but obviously much better. Uh, and if I'm going to use, say, I'm going to make a red house with a brown door, white edging around the door for the frame, then I've got two windows that I want to have black framing on, on both windows for the panes around them. Then I'm going to have a black roof and then a black doorknob. So here's all my colors, and you can see how we're going to do this right now. So when I'm tackling this, I actually am looking about what is the topmost layer and what has the most detail, because I wanna paint that last over top of the other colors. So when I'm painting, I wanna start with the biggest colors everywhere first. So for this, I would start with the red. So I would have a red house. And let's get this overview so you can see it a little better. Okay, so I will start with my red house. I'll actually paint it all red, but I will be avoiding the doorway and I'll avoid the windows. So I'm not going to paint the entire thing red. Unless I'm using a rattle can, say that everything needs to be red so I can just rattle can this and or airbrush the whole thing and just try to avoid these spots if I'm airbrushing but if there's overspray, I'm not too concerned. Then what I'll do is I could either mask it off uh, if I'm using a rattle can or airbrush. And so for my 3D print here, I could literally just take my roof off and paint that another color to help me with my base color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with basically a house looking just like that. And then I've got to look at the next layer. What is layered here to where I do not want to give my edges over? So what I would probably start with is I would probably get my windows 
and then get all of that taken care of. And this is kind of hard to tell, so with this, so I'm gonna actually be doing a few little switch arounds, but I would start with this because these are inset and there would be a lot of edges and things like that I'd have to take care of if I've like painted all of my edging black and then I have to go in there and it's gonna be very difficult to try to get right on the edges without actually getting on the uh, window panes with the black. So I'll start with this. Then what I would do would, I would actually start next with my door. So I would actually have my, then I would paint my door and then have my window right there like that. And what this would allow me to do is I could paint around the edges, not even having to worry about that frame that's around the window. And then I'll have my brown door. Then what I would do is I would go in with either my white or black because they don't touch each other. So it doesn't matter which one I start with, but I would go with my black and then go over top of the edges of my window like so. So then I actually have all my edges. I can just paint right on top of them because they are actually, you know, the topmost layer if you're looking at it from, you know, a horizontal view of it. So like, say here, you can see that the bumps here, I would actually act like that's the, the frame of the windows. And then I would paint this on top. So then once I have that and I've got my black, I would be doing my doorknob because it would be black as well. So then I would put my doorknob on. And after that, when I'm all done, then I would paint my frame around the door. So say if I wanna make it white. So you can see how I'm layering things because it would be very hard to get along those edges because you never wanna just paint one edge right up against another edge like that because then you could get gaps and things like that or overlap. So it's important to figure out which ways that you actually want to paint. So I painted this Spider-Man uh, a little while ago and I actually did a video of this too so you can actually see the whole thing. It's just a time lapse of how I painted it. But uh, there's some really good examples in here of like how I actually layered. Um, so what I did was I painted the entire thing black. So everything was black on the inside and everything. So I could get all of those awesome like shadows in there and everything like that. Then what I did was I got the red, got all of that painted, got on the edges and everything like that. And worrying about these edges of the jacket and back here. And after I did that, then I took care of my blue. So my blue got all done on the edges and I was, wasn't was worried about the zipper or anything like that for both of these. And once I had all of that, then I went in and started with say the, the rope the on his, like the shoestring on his hoodie. Once I had those, I had the blue, the red, and the black all done. I went to the eyes and what I did was I actually masked off around the eyes and it was actually masking in the middle of where the red actually is. And then I actually took my airbrush once it was all masked and I sprayed right here uh, and to get that fall off because that's actually not fully shadow of how you're seeing it right now. That's actually, it's just that ink that I sprayed here I only sprayed like right here and this is like the overspray to give that look. Once I did that, then I took all of that off and then I focused on the the red on the around the eyes. Then I did that on top. Once I had that, then I actually went and did the gloss black on all of the webbing. And then once I had all the webbing and I wasn't worried about getting it on of this logo right here because the logo was actually last. So I did this very last and did it right on top. So if there was anything on top of it, I wasn't worried and I just kept getting it. 
And once I had that, then I went to all of the zippers and I hand did all of those little zipper uh, links. And then I went to town on a lot of just the dry brushing because I did dry brushing on here to like a lighter blue. And then also here I did like a little bit of a brighter red. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. This is the way that, you know, I learned how to do it and it's just helped me out and it makes a lot of my painting a lot easier. So I hope my uh, little kindergartner project really helped you understand the concepts of how you should be stacking your paints and layering them one on top of each other, which ones you should be starting with and which ones should be last because it's going to help you uh, and save you from a lot of headaches of having to go back over the same thing you painted multiple times. And that's pretty much it. So thanks a lot for watching. Uh, thanks a lot to all my subscribers out there. Also, if there's anything that you wanna specifically see me do and show you how to do, please uh, leave a comment or message me and I will definitely make a video trying to help you out. Thanks a lot and I hope everybody has a great day.